first opening moments of the thing you are making is probably the most important part of any creation. <coughs> Terribly sorry about that one. So let's talk about Disco Elysium and how it manages to create an opening that captures your attention, builds up the game's unique atmosphere, makes you feel like someone you're not, and always keeps you guessing about what will happen next. So why should you care about an introduction? Well, it's because it will be the first thing anyone will see when you finally show them your big grand thing that you've spent the last two weeks working on. Or in the case of a video game, there are several years which were full of sweat, tears and probably so much stress that you will need therapy till the end of your days. And that is why you'd really like for people to have a good first impression of your game. It is not uncommon to see even the biggest game studios spending a great deal of time and money on creating the first moments of their games that immediately make you invested in what's to come. Your opening is the only aspect of your game that the 100% of your players will see. And that is why it is essential to start strong and show your audience the reason why they should spend the next 10, 20, or even 100 plus hours in your game. No one wants for their game to be described as Yeah, it starts pretty dull, but it gets better after the first 200 hours. Bad Start not only creates a certain preconceived notion about the overall quality of your game, but it may also discourage prayer from continuing praying. You should give your prayer something, no matter if that's gameplay, story or some other reason, but there needs to be something to motivate them to explore the world you've created and not quitting and playing Apex Legends instead. Because the reality is that in the modern world there is an overabundance of information attacking us from every direction, and the media we consume is not an exception. If we read, watch or play something, we need a reason to stay with this particular title over the infinite other similar works that we may engage with instead. Unfortunately, in this day and age, the slower your start is, the more detrimental it is to the potential success of your creation. That is why you may see some game studios deciding to put everything they have, and sometimes what they don't have as well, in the openings of their games. What this results in is the impressive first few minutes, which are followed by the immense disappointment, because instead of having an actual good game after that, you are stuck with a Ubisoft game. And how all of this translates into Disco Elysium? On a surface level, very poorly. This game does not freshes you with any shiny and well choreographed cutscenes at the start, and it doesn't present some accessible and satisfying gameplay loop you may immediately directly engage with. Instead, all it has is just a text on a blackboard narrated by two ominous voices. From a first glance, such an introduction should fail in capturing your attention and feel uninspired, overly simplistic and just plain lazy. However, what it lacks in the technical department, it successfully compensates with something much more important. It has this very weird and very rare for a modern gaming thing that is called a soul. Or in other, less dramatic worlds, it manages to immediately intrigue you with its minimalistic style, fluid dialogue that flows naturally and makes you constantly question yourself about what is even happening on your screen. This initial confusion is a big part of the opening's charm, and it starts even before you click that begin button. In what any respected RPG enjoyer may call a character creator. The idea of pushing several sliders left or right, choosing your race, background and genitalia size isn't particularly new to the RPG games. On the contrary, it is one of those things that defines the whole genre. So that is why it became more or less standardized over the years and every time you launch a new, isometric, old school choices driven RPG that was inspired by Baldur's 
use gate and found it on Kickstarter, you more or less know what your character creation experience will be like. Or you think you know, until this Elysium just pulls a rack out from under your feet and leaves you with these skill selections that makes absolutely no sense. At first at least. After you spend some time in a game, all of this becomes perfectly clear. But initially, all of this just looks like a scribbles of an insane man. Before the game even gives you a chance to see what it has to offer, it already establishes an atmosphere of mystery and alienation. You don't actually feel like you're playing just another CRPG anymore. Now you're just as confused as someone would be if they would lose their entire memory and ended up in a place they know nothing about, surrounded by complete strangers and with no clue how to do what they've been doing for the last 20 years. To add up to that pile of mysteries, the introduction itself never gives you any direct answers. No matter what prompts you choose, you will never get any concrete piece of information about what is really happening and why you are in the dark, talking to your limbic system out of all things. Not only this immediately hooks you into discovering what is even happening, but it simultaneously starts building a thick and hypnotic atmosphere that will be present throughout your whole experience. And in order to establish this atmosphere, this game has one more ace up its sleeve. Some things in RPGs have remained unchanged ever since the good old days, when you had to actually have friends to experience any type of role-playing adventures. D&D. I was talking about D&D. Modern role-playing games are basically an attempt to realize the full ambition of an actual D&D session, but with glossy graphics and Troy Baker voicing every line of dialogue. The mighty chicken killer. Among many other things that Dungeons and Dungeons established for computer RPGs, there are two particular aspects I want to examine closer. One I've already mentioned, the character creation. You can argue that their ability to make dozens or even hundreds of different build variations, each with their unique backstory and abilities, is why many play those sorts of games in the first place. But just having the freedom of expressing yourself through the character creator is not enough to be a good RPG. Just like any good Dungeons and Drakes campaign, a good role-playing game provides chances for any type of a character to shine. No matter if you're playing the most efficient, meticulous build, or you just randomly clicked through a character sheet because words make your head hurt, you still should feel like you're the protagonist of this story. If your game master forces you to pick cabbages for your entire session, then you'll probably just quit and go play football instead. And RPGs are not actually different in that regard. Your choices and actions should feel impactful and have everlasting consequences, otherwise, what is the point of even doing anything? You are the main hero of this journey, and it is your decisions that will change the fate of this particular fictional world that you temporarily inhabit. And that is the second aspect of modern RPGs which I want to bring to your attention and which has remained practically the same as it was in Dungeon and Dragon days. It is the place of your hero in the story. And this place is always at the very center. Everything from a simple errand for a shopkeeper, to a tragic backstory of your companions, to even the future of the entire civilization is something that you will be a part of. And it is fun to save worlds and be the biggest cock in the room. I'm not going to argue with that. But after some time, the effect of it starts to wear off. You look at another grand and ambitious role-playing game and think to yourself, how will they make me the chosen one this time? And the ominous voices, vague descriptions and dramatic music for sure amplify this feeling of chosenness. I'm not even sure if that's a real world, but regardless of that, Disco Elysium starts by giving you hints, which you've most probably already seen before. 
you have some sort of a tragic backstory, you've fallen from grace, you have to beat someone or otherwise you'll lose, all of this fits perfectly your hero that saves the day checklist. So naturally, by the end of your short intercourse with the voices in the darkness, you will expect an epic adventure that will sprawl across the whole world and will change everything forever. So when you wake up in the middle of a trashed hotel room with nothing more than a simple pair of underwear to cover your feeble, weak, old and damaged body, your adventurous spirit will most likely become much less ambitious, and the slow realization that this might be not the type of a story you expected this to be will start to settle in. Maybe you are not the hero you originally thought you are. Because as a matter of a fact, you will not save the world and your decisions will barely even change anything in the end. You are not a hero, you are a broken old drunkard who drank so much it gave him a permanent brain damage. Just like the character creator doesn't give you what you originally expected, the whole game never actually fulfills that power fantasy that all classic RPGs give you on a silver plateau. And it is disappointing. But it disappoints you in a good way, because on one hand you feel like you've been sort of betrayed, when you see that this choices driven game has only one proper ending, and that the big mystery just solves itself no matter how good or bad you were at actually doing your job. But at the same time it's really refreshing to see a game where the whole universe doesn't spin around you and life just continues, no matter of what weird and stupid stuff happens to you. You're not Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, you're just another man who has his own struggles, regrets and a path he needs to follow. And there is still a place for wonder and weirdness in your life. Even if this wonder comes from a place you expected the least. After all, maybe there are colors in this world and not everything is a never-ending void of darkness. But to figure that one out, you'll have to open your eyes and see for yourself what lies outside the boundaries of your own head. And disco Elysium makes you ready for everything it has to offer by simply wearing all of its wildness on its sleeves from the very first moment you lie your eyes on it. You know that you will be confused a lot, have little idea of what is even going on and be constantly proven wrong even before you get to the actual main quest. The game introduces itself to you without any complex descriptions or elaborate voiceovers. It just throws you into the madness and makes you accept it from the very start. It makes it very clear how unconventional is the journey before you, and you can either decide that reading walls of text which make little to no sense is too much for you, or alternatively you can go on with the flow and just enjoy the tune of disco.